The next time somebody tells you that a subcompact drill is weak, go ahead and show them this. That's a half inch thick piece of steel. That's one of those step bits from Harbor Freight and that's a Mountain Dew. Check this out. Go ahead and got that tightened down. Who needs any kind of cutting oil? What more do you want in a subcompact drill? Look at that. I can tell you that we drilled all the way through with that rigid subcompact drill. You wanna see how much power this new rigid subcompact impact driver has? Well, there you have it. There is a Tapcon masonry screw. We're gonna go ahead and drill that thing in. We're gonna be able to twist it right off. Look at that, just twisted clean off. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. My name's Chris. Today we're gonna to check out the rigid subcompact impact driver and drill. This is kit R9780. You can pick this up at Home Depot just like I did. I picked mine up the day after it was announced on Friday, purchased it on a Saturday buy all my own tools with my own money. I'm not sponsored. I do these purely because I enjoy it as well as sharing information with you guys that I have along the way. I can tell you that I have Gen 2 rigid stuff that I purchased back in 2008. So you can see that I've been in the rigid game for well over 12 years. I have my Gen 5 stuff that I purchased in 2018 and then again recently just picked up the subcompact impact driver and drill. Now the difference about that is, is when I purchase these with my own money, I have expectations that I want them to perform. I hope these perform just as well as the previous versions, and then I want them to be a little bit lighter than what they are. So we're gonna test out the impact driver here. We're gonna see if it can take off the lug nuts on my car. Hopefully it can do 75, 100, and even 125 foot-pounds. If it does that, I'd say that that thing passes. Now let's go ahead and see how this impact driver performs in high torque applications. So everybody always likes to see how these impact drivers perform. And I'm pretty interested too. We're gonna see if this thing can pump out 75, 100, and even 125 foot-pounds for nut busting torque. So we're gonna start things off conservatively at 75 foot-pounds and see if this rigid subcompact impact driver is able to deal with that. So we'll go ahead and torque this down to 75 foot-pounds. There you can see we're actually at 79.4. And we'll see if this little guy is able to take that off. So with relative ease at 75 foot-pounds, I think was able to take that off. Let's bump it up to 100 and see how it performs. All right, so here you can see we hit 100.3 foot-pounds now let's see if that little guy can take that off. There you go, no problem taking off 100 foot-pounds with the subcompact impact driver. Let's go ahead and bump this up to maybe like 125 and see if it'll take it off. Now it's not uncommon that people will over torque their lug nuts, so we're gonna go ahead and crank this up to 125 foot-pounds. There you can see we are dialed right in at 125 foot-pounds. So we'll see if that's a challenge for the rigid subcompact impact driver. Little challenge there, but we were able to take off 125 foot-pounds with the rigid subcompact impact driver. So nicely done, Rigid. That thing is putting out a lot of torque, and I'm pretty impressed with the small size. So on the drill, we already saw it drill through half-inch thick steel. 
with that step bit from Harbor Freight. And I don't know what more you could want after that, but we're gonna take this thing through spade bits. We're gonna do the five eighths, the three quarter, and the one inch, as well as some speed bores with that. Now let's go ahead and see how these two tools perform when it comes to working with paddle bits and speed bores. Now let's go ahead and try out this subcompact drill. This thing is said to produce around 400 inch pounds when it comes to torque. So we'll go ahead and put on the five eighths. We'll see how this works. We're gonna do it left handed too. You can see that that has no problem cutting right through there with that paddle bit. So we're gonna go ahead and step it up to the speed bore. We know that that takes a little bit extra. We'll see how that one works. A lot nicer holes when you use that speed bore. So no problem with the 5 8 speed bore. We'll go ahead and try out the 3 quarter paddle there. And again, we're just using the two amp hour battery that these comes with. You can see that we are draining that a little bit. We took off one bar already. And we got through that paddle bit without a problem. So now we'll go ahead and try that speed bore. That's pretty nice, really smooth. So now we got the one inch paddle bit. We'll see how that performs. We'll go ahead and make sure we stabilize this a little bit. Be able to cut right through that. That's a one inch paddle bit for you. So let's go ahead and try out that speed bore. Yeah, way nicer on that speed bore. Now you can see we had no problem cutting through with all of those different sizes on that rigid subcompact drill. That's a pretty nice drill right there. Let's drill some more holes through this. So that rigid subcompact drill pumping out 400 inch pounds is plenty powerful to tear through even some of the toughest of things. So there is the subcompact impact driver. We got our 5 8 spade bit locked in. Let's go ahead and see how it performs. Cutting right through that. We got our 2 amp hour battery. You can see there we are on full bars. through that right through a knot there that worked out really really well so that's the spade bit let's go ahead and try the speed bore these things perform pretty nice on the impact drives actually so lots of chip removal looking real nice and there we go that was the 5 8 so let's step it up to 3 quarter this might be a little bit more of a challenge. So three quarter, proven to be no challenge. Now we'll go ahead and use the speed bore. speed bore no issues so now we got the one inch paddle now this one's going to be a little bit tougher so we're going to go ahead and stabilize this and we were able to get through a little extra work on that So after a little bit of work there, we were able to get that one inch paddle through. 
So now let's go ahead and do the one inch speed bore. This one should go through really, really nicely. Again, I like using the speed bores on the impact. They seem to just not have any issues binding up at all. There we go, all the way through. So that was the rigid subcompact impact driver. There you can see we had no problem. One inch speed bore, one inch paddle, three quarter speed bore, three quarter paddle. There we got the five eighths. So really, really impressed with the performance of these two devices here. But I would not recommend using the one inch spade bit with that drill because it's just taxing it quite a bit. But those speed bores, man, that's a beautiful thing. Other than that, these things are pretty powerful, really liking them. Let's go do some more tests with these. And then we're gonna see how it performs with deck screws, as well as we're gonna go in this composite here. We're gonna drill some pilot holes and then put in our T20 deck screws and see if we can get a nice flush finish on that and just have some general fun with some new tools. So if you take the opportunity right now to make sure you hit that subscribe button, it allows me the opportunity to have my channel grow, as well as tell you about the new tools that come out and purchase them to keep fueling my tool habit. So we're gonna use our subcompact drill here. We're gonna drill five pilot holes, and then we're gonna put in our composite deck screws. Now while I do that, I'm gonna tell you, I did buy these tools again with my own money which means I had the opportunity to go through the lifetime service agreement registration when it comes to buying rigid tools. I can tell you since I bought these the day after launch on a Saturday, I went to register the tools and this toolkit came with two batteries and I only had a spot to do one. So I still finished the registration process, but I also had to give them a call on a Monday, which by the time I did call them on Monday, I could see that they resolved the issue had the opportunity to talk to a nice guy that also said, hey, that's really neat that you bought these tools. I said, yeah, I really think they're neat. I'm gonna showcase them on my YouTube channel. And he went ahead and he hit the subscribe button to the Client Graphics channel, so maybe you can do that too while we're getting through the rest of this test. But he was able to take care of all the problems. All the tools got registered from the time I started it to a Monday morning, so less than three days I had all my tools ready to go, and should I have any problems, I know that Rigid is going to take care of me. Now because I've had these tools since 2008, I can tell you Rigid has replaced the batteries for me twice on this, and they still fit Generation 5, as well as the batteries on these new ones. Well, they're slightly different. You can see the battery indicator there. It's different, but it still works. It works just the same. So we got our five pilot holes drilled. Now we'll go ahead, and we're not going to be using any special bits here. These are bits that were picked up at Tractor Supply Company. And again, one thing that I really like is the self-ejecting, and it still stays open and locking chuck on the rigid tools. So we're going to go ahead and put these in. Now you probably could use the drill, so we'll try that out here pretty soon. And that has a nice, nice flush finish. So these, again, have an easy chuck, and that is a half inch chuck, and it is plastic around that drill chuck. So let's go ahead and lock in, and we will try drilling in the composite deck screw. And because it was on speed two, it went so fast, it went a little deeper than I'd wanted, but let's go ahead and try drilling that in on speed one. You can see that it has a lot of power, a lot of torque, still able to get a very nice flush finish on that and have no issues with that rigid drill. It really performs very, very nicely. We'll go ahead and finish up the rest of these deck screws here with the impact driver. We'll do this left-handed to see if it's any different. Has enough power, plenty of torque, still a very nice flush finish on there. And when you drill that pilot hole, that allows you to not have a mushroom 
when it comes to working with these on your composite decking. So there we go again, nice flush finish. Really like the lightweight of these drills. Speaking of lightweight, let's go ahead and weigh these with the new battery on the new tool compared to the Gen 5 with the older battery. Again, still two amp hour, but slightly redesigned. So we're gonna measure out the subcompact impact driver with the new two amp hour battery. And we can see with battery, that comes in at 42.0 ounces. Now, if we look at the Gen 5, we can see that that comes in at 54.7 ounces. Now, since the batteries are redesigned, we're gonna go ahead and see if there's any difference in weight or size when it comes to looking at the batteries. It looks like the newer design battery is ever so slightly smaller than the older design. So there's probably not gonna be much of a weight difference. So on the new battery, we're at 14.9 ounces, so just under 15 ounces. And the older design battery is 16.45. Now the thing to note, if you liked the fact that the older battery has rubber on the bottom of that, that helped so your tool didn't slide as easy. Note that the new battery is all plastic on the bottom, so it slides very, very easy. Now when it comes to looking at the subcompact drill, we can see that this thing weighs in with the two amp hour new battery at 47.55 ounces. Now the Gen 5 drill with the older battery, that comes in at 59.7 ounces. So any way you look at it, the subcompact are gonna be lighter than the Gen 5. And since I don't have the exact model to compare it to that Rigid has, I can really tell you that they're lighter. Are they 30% lighter? Well, that I really can't tell you. And check out this Gen 2 drill. This thing is a monster, and it also ends up weighing a ton. 95.3 ounces. So what are my final thoughts when it comes to looking at the rigid subcompact impact driver and drill kit? Well, I like the fact that it comes with two batteries. I like the fact that I already have a bunch of rigid, the batteries are interchangeable, and it's smaller, but yet still competes and has enough torque compared to the bigger alternatives. I like the direction that they're going, and I wish other manufacturers would continue to follow in the sense that we're gonna get lighter tools that have heavy hitting performance and still has a nice footprint. I like the fact that Rigid still continues to use the same battery platform throughout all their tools, even though these are a little bit more low profile than the alternative here, you still get the same battery platform which helps save you money if you're already invested in the Rigid line. Now is this directed at a DIYer, homeowner, weekend warrior? In some senses you could say yes. If I'm gonna be picking out a tool for my wife or my daughter, I'm gonna want it to be as light as possible so they can continue to not get fatigued while using the tool and get the most amount of work out of them and the tool. So to me, it's an added benefit to get a lot of power out of a smaller package, but still allow me to be in the same battery platform when I like the rigid platform. The one thing I still look forward to for the rigid platform is I need some outdoor power equipment. I need a string trimmer. That's why I started looking at other platforms because Rigid still hasn't brought a string trimmer to their platform. While they do have a jet blower, I still need that string trimmer so I can use my same batteries and get everything done that I need around the house. So until that day, I'm still missing out on that string trimmer. I still do love my Rigid tools and I hope you do too. I don't think you'll be disappointed in these even at $199. If you don't need to jump on them right away, I'm sure they're gonna have a sale on these at some point in time where you'll either get these at a discount price or you'll get some extra batteries with it. I think the two amp hour batteries are pretty fair to get you around with what you need around the house. But anybody that wants to use these a ton is either gonna to need to have a couple more two amp hour batteries or maybe some four amp hour batteries. Also guys, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and give it two thumbs down. Let others know down below in the comments what you think of the new Rigid Subcompact line as I continue to like tools that get smaller and have just as much power and torque as their bigger alternatives. You know I like laying down torque. If you like this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. It continues to allow me to buy tools with my own money 
and show them off to you and see if it's something that is worthwhile for you to spend your money on. If you're already invested in the Rigid line, there's no reason not necessarily to get these, but there also is no reason not to. I didn't see any show shoppers that would tell me that these tools are gonna have problems or they have flaws. It's part of the Rigid line. You do have to know that it's got the 18 volt battery that continues to work across this tool as well as previous generations and have zero issues with those batteries working on there. These are my tools. I can do what I want with them and I like them. So guys, at the end of the day, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as always guys, work smarter, not harder. And I'll catch you in the next video.